Today I'm going to be sharing my watercolor pencil drawing from the December Smart Art Box. Yeah, I'm late. Hi, I'm Lisa, the artist behind La Cree Fine Art. The holidays got in the way. I'm just a little behind, and the funny thing is, I think my new Smart Art Box is already here. So you get two of these videos this month. This video is being sponsored by Smart Art Box. If you are unfamiliar with Smart Art Box, they are a monthly subscription box where every single month they send you a box full of full size supplies, everything you need to complete your own project. Along with that box full of supplies, you will get a brochure that will walk you through everything from the style that this month's project is based on, project pointers, it goes over the supplies included in that box, and on the back you will get step-by-step -step instructions on how to complete your project. So if it is a medium that you've never worked in before, you're not going to feel totally lost. Definitely takes away some of the scary of trying something new. This month's box had lots of fun stuff in it. We have the brochure we've already gone over. A set of 12 watercolor pencils by Art Alternatives. A set of paint brushes and a little holder. A water brush. I'm actually kind of excited to try that out. A pencil sharpener. And a pad of studio watercolor by Fabriano. This has 12 cold press sheets that are 140 pounds and they are an 8x10. That is really thick paper. I'm actually really wanting to try this with ink tents too. I've never tried cold press watercolor, so this has enough that I will be able to test it out with that too. Yay! I've never tried watercolored pencils. I've used watercolor, but not the pencils, so I was really interested in trying this out. Let's go ahead and take a look at my project. I have started out by drawing my giraffe with a water-soluble graphite pencil. That is by Faber-Castell. And now, anytime I work with any sort of water-soluble anything, whether that be acrylic painting or ink tents or, now in this case, watercolor pencil, when I draw my initial drawing out, I'm going to use water-soluble graphite because it's going to mix in completely and I'm not going to have these heavy graphite lines that I can't get rid of. So, love water-soluble graphite for that. Anyway, this giraffe is actually, some of you may have recognized, it was one of the Patreon reference photos for this month, one of the photos that I've taken myself. I am now shading in lots of colors. I want this guy to be really, really colorful. I am not a watercolor artist. I do not know what I'm doing here, so it was kind of just, let's experiment and see what happens. And I'm not going to lie, I was really hoping not to like this medium. Unfortunately, I did, and now I think I need a full set of watercolor pencils, because this was actually a lot of fun. So I'm using a lot of purples and blues. I think those were my main colors I used here. This wasn't a huge set of pencils, but because they blend so well, I felt like I was able to mix any color that I wanted. They just, they really did a good job of mixing and blending together. So I've got the yellow down first. I'm coming through with this coral color. I'm going to mix some blues and purples, but I'm going to switch, I'm going to blend the corals and yellows first next to purple, because if I go with the blue right up against the yellow, I'm going to end up with a green color, and that was one color I did not want in this piece. You can see I'm just kind of working in little circles. I'm not being as careful as you'll often see me work with regular colored pencils. I'm being fairly messy with this in all honesty. And I've laid down the purples and blues first, and then I've gone on top with black in areas that I want to be much darker. But when I blend it out with water, the black just mixes in with whatever I'm doing and makes that specific color darker. I never ended up with black black in any one place. I used the white pencil first in a couple of areas that I wanted to stay light. I'm not sure if it made much difference, honestly. I used it a bit on the ear, and then later on, I just let the white of the paper show through. That was one pencil that wasn't on my must-have list. And the thing with watercolor is, it will lift off the paper a bit. So if any one area, if I went too dark, I can take a paintbrush with water and lift a lot of that watercolor off the paper. So I don't think that the white was all that necessary, just in the way that, that these pencils worked in general. You can see adding the blue here. And I didn't worry so much, like when I work with normal colored pencils, I worry about the direction of the pencil and making sure I'm working in little circles all the time and keeping everything very smooth. Did not matter in this. Once I blended with the water, it really didn't make a difference. 
Now this paper does have a lot of tooth. It is the cold press watercolor paper versus hot press that you'll often see me use, which basically means there's more texture. There are more nooks and crannies in this paper. But once I blend it out with the water, it didn't make a huge noticeable difference. You will see more texture in this than you will in several of my other pieces, but it gives it kind of a cool effect. So choosing cold press versus hot press, I think largely depends on what technique you're going for, what in end result you want. It's not an issue of one is right or one is wrong. Now with regular colored pencil, I personally would not choose cold press. It's too rough for the look that I'm going for, but it can give, give you some kind of cool textured effects if that's something that you're looking for. Adding a lot of purple on these darker areas. Now for much of this, I would add the brown pencil and then add purples and blues into that. And it blended really well. And I did do this in several layers. So I would get my base layer, blend that out with water while one area dried, I would get my base layer for the next section and then go back to a previous layer once it was dry. But working the pencils over wet paper didn't work really well. It actually can damage the tooth of your paper. Now whenever I'm working with a medium that I've never worked before, I'm not going to be super hard on myself. I'm not going to worry about every little detail being perfect. I just want to create something, this is basically a sample in my mind, of getting a hang, just to get a hang of using that medium. If you worry too much, if you're new to any medium, no matter what it is, if you're so worried about making a mistake, then you're not going to be willing to experiment, which means you're not going to learn. I think it's so important to try different things. See what happens when you add this color next to this color. How do they layer? What happens if I layer this one over this one? Those type of things are very important to learn, so don't be afraid of making a mistake. There were plenty of things on here as I worked that I thought, huh, I'll do this a little bit differently next time. So these brushes that I'm using right now, I've just got water on them. Now I'm often asked, can't I just use watercolored pencils instead of col regular colored pencils with paint thinner? You can, it's just going to get you a bit of a different end result. It will look different and the way that you layer, there will be some differences there. But if that's something that concerns you, if you would rather use water, you can. I, as you can see, you can get some really cool looks here. The thing with watercolored pencils is it will lift. So as you add additional layers, depending on how much water you're using and the way that you're handling the brush, you can lift previous layers. So that's just something that you want to be aware of. You will have to adjust your techniques when working with a watercolored pencil and water versus regular wax or oil-based pencils and paint thinner. But that doesn't mean that you can't get absolutely beautiful results with watercolor colored pencils. Now on this guy, I'm not too concerned about what color goes where. My whole goal was just to use a whole lot of colors on him. I didn't have a ref, I mean my reference photo I had from the Patreon ones, but I didn't have a definite, okay, I know for sure by my reference photo, magenta goes here, blue goes there. I'm just throwing color down and experimenting with it. So on the eye, I started by adding black. I put blue over the, the kind of mid-tone area of the highlight on the eye. And then I left the brightest white portion just white with the paper. Now one thing that I really liked, I've never been sure, again, I've not ever worked with watercolor colored pencils before. I always just kind of thought you might end up with a problem with the water spreading and colors bleeding from one to the next. Did not find that to be the case. They really stayed where I put them quite well. They were very similar to working with ink tense pencils in just the way that you layer. The difference here was that, well, these colors don't have as much color saturation as ink tents do. That was a big difference. And these, like I said before, they will lift off the paper, whereas the ink tents are going to be permanent. But they were similar in a lot of ways, which is probably why I had a lot of fun with them. I'm using the black here and darkening some of the spots I already have. And like I said, I'm never leaving black straight black. The black in the eye, I layered blue and red over it to deepen that color up so that it wasn't flat black. I really liked the little brush holder that this kit came with. That is definitely a keeper. And the brushes actually were really nice too. I really liked how these brushes worked. In my head, I always thought with watercolor you would use much softer brushes and I didn't find that to be the case here. The brushes, I believe these are Taclon bristle brush. I need to look at the description, but they're more like what I would use for acrylic and they worked perfectly for this. So that was really interesting. That's one of the things that I like so much with Smart Art Box is that I get to try, you know, basically whatever they send me. And sometimes I am so surprised because in my head, I have 
an idea of what supplies are used for different mediums or this is how you do this and when you try a different way you can learn so many things so in this case I'm trying different brushes than what I would typically expect to use with watercolor and they were perfect I loved them especially the rounds I really like the the results that I got from the round brushes And I'm just adding in, I'm basically blocking in my darkest shadows at this point. Wherever I'm moving the brush, I am making, or the pencil, I'm making sure that it's going in the right direction for whichever direction the fur goes there. But the majority of this guy is going to be very smooth. I'm not going to have a lot of marks for the fur. I didn't want to spend a week working on this project. Again, I'm just practicing, you know, just getting a feel for the medium. So I want to keep it fairly simple. But I am making sure that my pencil strokes are going in the direction of the fur on my reference photo. And for most of the shadows that you'll see me work here, I'm keeping my darkest portions. The deepest shadows are going to be the darker blue and then just switching to the lighter blue for the lighter portions. So I'm going to shade a lot of this in, just get the brown first. Let's block in where the spots are on this guy, just so I don't lose my place. After adding the brown, I have come back through with purple for most of these spots. Again, I wanted this to have this sort of rainbow feel to it. So I've started with the light blue for pretty much the majority of the neck. I'll come back through and add the dark blue as shadows later on. Now one thing I will suggest, if you're new to a medium, even if you buy a full set, let's say you get a ton of colored pencils and you have every color available to you, start with just a limited palette. Don't try to use all of them right off the bat. Make your first project or two just a handful of colors. Don't overdo it. I think it can get very overwhelming. So in this case, I'm not even using the full set. The, it, the set came with 12. I'm not even using all of those. I'm probably using, I'd say, nine of the colors out of the 12, maybe eight. But it makes it much easier to manage. When you try to mix too many colors into something, you can make a horrible, muddy, muddy mess. And especially if you're not used to blending with colors. If, For example, if you were used to working in graphite or working in black and white, you switch to color. If you try to add too many colors right away, that definitely can be overwhelming. And it can be discouraging when you start having colors blend together and getting results that you didn't want. So if you can get the hang of it by just using a handful of colors to start with, it can make it much easier for you to learn. And that's definitely what I'm doing here. Most of this giraffe is going to be my two shades of blue, purple, brown, and a little bit of yellow. I've also pulled a tiny bit of coral into him. And I think if you're really intimidated by the color, you could even remove the yellow and the coral from this. Just use the two shades of blue, purple, brown, and black. I think that would be enough to complete this entire giraffe. And the nice thing with this set, you've got so many sheets of paper. I think it came with 10 or 12, I forget. But you've got a lot of sheets of paper. So you can do a lot of, pro of projects. With this one, I could draw the same giraffe and add additional colors or try him with different colors and different values and shading techniques. This was definitely one of my favorite boxes. I know I say that a lot, but I really was just having a blast with this. I spent far longer on this project than I typically do on these, just because I was having so much fun. Now I found if I blended out my first layers with water, you can see how it, it kind of dissolves that watercolor right into the paper, gets rid of that gritty look with from the texture of the paper showing through. Once I do that, I can do additional layers to shade with a pencil and not have to blend with the water. I did blend with the water on many of the additional layers, but I think as long as you get that first layer blended out, the additional layers look nice if you are just comfortable blending with the pencils themselves. And 
Now with working with watercolor, if you're having a hard time, if you don't want to size the paper, which is a whole event with getting the paper wet and having it dry so that it doesn't stretch, you can look up videos on sizing watercolor paper. I don't ever do it. I just have no interest in, in putting that much work into it. Normally what I do if I'm using paper like this, I will tape it down along the edges. That way when it dries, it dries back into shape so I don't have, it's not too bad with the warping. This one I didn't have taped down so I did have the paper warp a bit. But I could have completely prevented that by taping it down to a, any kind of drawing board so that when it dried, it dried back flat. And I just chose to work one little area at a time. So here I wanted to get the neck mostly blocked in before I moved on to the face. And I like to get the eyes in. Normally when I paint or draw animals, I like to get that done fairly quickly because it makes it easier for me to judge the rest of the values on the rest of the piece. Usually the eyes are going to have some of the darkest portions. So blocking that in first or the center of the ear, that will the shadow in the ear will usually be one of the darkest portions as well. So those are two areas I will normally get blocked out very, very early in any of my paintings or drawings. So here I'm just quickly going through and blocking out. I'm using my brown pencil and blocking out where the spots are on the face. I'm going to block out the nose as well. I'm adding purple over that brown. Those two colors blended really, really well together. Portions I leave more brown and portions I leave more purple. I'm not just trying to get one solid even coverage here. Now for the shadow on the nose, I don't just want a big black hole here. I want to make sure that it fades from the black, the darkest portions up to the lightest portions. So you can see I faded from that dark purple, I added a little bit of black into the purple, and then up into my dark blue and then light blue on the outer edge. And this will give it much more depth than just being this big black hole. And no matter if whether you're drawing a person or an animal, be aware of that. Don't just draw basically a black raisin where the nose is going to go. Get those shadows in there pulling a little bit of the coral color, and I used a lot of the coral. This portion of the mouth was very brown, and I wanted to add an additional co color here, so I used a lot of the coral. I actually don't know what the name is called on the pencil. I don't know if it's marked with, with name, colors. Look coral to me, so that's what we're co going with. Again, just paying attention to where my shadows are, the lights and the darks. There's that coral I was talking about. Now to start with, this ended up being way too pink just for the, the front end. It was kind of drawing attention to his mouth. So later on, I'm going to mix some more blues and purples into that just to tone it down. But now I'm going over this portion of his face with that light blue, just blocking this in everywhere. There's that coral. One of the things that I liked here is when I went, got kind of out of control using too much of the coral there, it was no problem to mix that in with other colors later on. So I was able to change my mind and it really didn't mess anything up. So here I'm trying, this tool is really cool. It is a water brush where you fill the brush with water and it just, you paint that over whatever area you're working on. The really great thing is I just got a Christmas present from Derwent and they sent me one of their water brushes too. So I'll have another one to try out very soon. I'm sure you'll see that in a video coming up, but I'm really excited to try that one because I really, really liked this brush. Now, one of the things that I need to work with when working with watercolor, I have a tendency, and I've always had this tendency, I go way too light, and I have a hard time building up to my darker colors because you can lift the previous colors up. So that is definitely something that I'm working on here, and you'll see where I'll come back through with my darker blue and really darken up a lot of this light blue because right now everything's very flat. It's like all solid one color of blue in here. I definitely need to add some depth. Now this brush, I did find that I had to wipe off on a paper towel or rinse in my water well just a little bit here and there where I would start to get too much of one color and it just kind of bled into the next color. So cleaning this brush off is just as important as cleaning your regular paint brushes. 
Another thing I really liked is I tried to use this brush to add some of the hairs coming off the chin, and they were way too thick. This was not the right brush for that, and it was no big deal. It just wiped off with my hand anywhere where I had put that because it stayed wet, and it just it didn't stain it right away like it would if I were using, let's say, ink tents. So that was kind of a nice little bonus there. So now that the neck is dry, I'm going to go ahead and start adding in the shadows, really working on getting the contrast. And while I will blend some of this out, it's still, because I'm not fighting the white of the paper anymore, I've already got my base layers of blue, it looks nice just leaving the, the shading from the pencil. I really like that very loose, rough look I got from this. It was sort of freeing and not worrying about everything looking photorealistic here. This was definitely a very, very enjoyable medium to work in. I loved this project. I'm adding some of that darker blue and black into the spots on the neck just to really make those pop out. Blending that out with my water brush. And if any of you use watercolored pencils, let me know what some of your favorite brands are. I have never used them before, so I don't know what's good or not. I would love to hear some of your opinions. Again, just deepening up some of these shadows, really defining everything better. And I did need to make sure this part was totally dry before I worked the pencils back over, the, over it. The pencil doesn't really stick to wet paper anyway, besides the fact that it would, like I said earlier, it will damage the tooth of the paper. So make sure that's dry first. I used a hair dryer to dry mine faster. Working on the shadows here. Adding a few more spots on the face. I didn't copy my reference photo exactly. If there was a spot that felt empty to me, I just added an extra spot. One of the joys of being an artist, you could get to work on yours to make it look however you want. You don't have to always follow the photo exactly when you're working on something like this. Now, if this were a pet portrait, I was painting someone's cat, yeah, I need to make sure those spots are in the exact right spot. But here, I'm just, this is a random wildlife photo. Nobody's going to know exactly which giraffe this is, so no one's going to look at that and go, oh, that spot's wrong. Well, okay, those of you on Patreon who also have this photo now, you guys will know, but most people would never notice the difference. So it's not something that I would worry about. If I feel that adding an extra spot somewhere would look better on my piece, then that's what I'm going to do. You can see I'm starting to pull more of the purples and blues into the mouth because that area, the whole front end of the face, was just too much coral. And I also pulled more coral up on the top of the head just to let that blend in a bit. Going to blend that out with my water brush. After I used this the first time, I found myself reaching for it more than my other brushes. I really did enjoy working on this. It's like the lazy person's paintbrush when blending things out with water. So I have a feeling that's going to be one of my favorites when working with ink tints. And I've got to make sure, again, I need to clean it off before if I work on an area that has yellow, I don't want to jump straight into the blue and the other way around. I don't want to go in a dark area and then blend straight into the light area. I'm going to wipe that off on my paper towel because that brush does pick up some of the pigment from your other colors and you can spread them and end up with horrible mud. One thing that I definitely found, if I push too hard with a pencil, it doesn't blend out as smoothly as if I keep a light hand and blend that way. So that was definitely, I think, a big change I would do in the future is just keep layering or adding light, light layers on top of each other to build a lot of pigment on the paper and then blend with water versus pushing hard to get a lot of pigment. It just doesn't blend as well that way. Darkening up some of these spots. I don't want any of these to be quite as dark as either the nose or the eye, but I still want them to be, be fairly dark, so there are portions I'm adding the dark. Now, the dark spots, I'm not just filling them all in with solid black on the whole thing. Portions are going to be lighter on any individual spot. You'll see where it fades from light to dark. That variation is important. Adding some of the dots where the whiskers are on his mouth there. And I also use this to add some little hairs around the face and coming off of his chin. Better to find the lump on his head. I have no idea what that area is called. 
little bit more coral to make him more colorful. I found the coral was also a lot easier to control if I added it later on. When I put it in first, I was kind of lost on where do I want this? I know I want color mixed in with this or that coral color mixed in, but I felt like I went out of control with it when I started on the mouth. When I came through later as some of my final details, it made it much easier to control and much easier to decide, oh, this looks good on parts of the spot or parts of his ear. Much more so than just filling in his entire mouth with it. I think if I were to do this one again, I probably would have done the most of his mouth in the blues and purples and then come through and added the highlights with the coral. It would have made it easier to control the colors. Coming through with some of the darker blue to darken some of this up, I want to create a bit more form in his face because it is so flat there. Blending that out with the brush. I've switched to one of the round paint brushes just to tr see what the difference was between that and the water brush. I actually really liked them both. It was just a difference in how lazy I was being at the moment. So there is my finished piece. This was so much fun. If you guys have drawn one of these with these pencils with the Smart Art Box, tag me in it. I would love to see what you've completed. I had way more fun with these than I was hoping to because now I think I need to buy a full set of watercolor pencils. I already work in too many mediums. I didn't want to love a new one. The rainbow giraffe tells me I need to. It's also weird to have a rainbow giraffe whispering in your ear. If you're interested in signing up to get your own smart art box sent to your home every month, there is a link in the video description where you can go to get that along with a coupon code that will get you a discount off your subscription for life. I'm also really excited to find out what this next smart art box is because I know it's in my apartment's office waiting for me. Like getting a Christmas present. You have no idea what's going to be inside, but it's art related, so you know it's going to be fun. Do you like art videos? I've got a deal for you. For a limited time only, if you hit that subscribe button, you will have access to all five of my art videos every single week. Okay, it's not limited time and it's actually free and you don't have to be subscribed to see them. Wasn't my idea to say those things. Rainbow Giraffe has been whispering weird things in my head. Anyway, there's a subscribe button right there, so I made it super easy for you to keep up with all of those newer videos. Okay, I'm done.